I am John. Welcome to Prepper Nation, especially if it's your first time. Uh, I truly appreciate you being here. So, few people are no longer here. They decided to leave this morning. Apparently, this morning's video, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. If you got a few minutes, got up into a few people's feelings and you know, they want to be belligerent on the way out the door. It is what it is. Uh, John, you should care more about the kids at this campus and the faculty. But again, I really don't. Um, I don't know if it's a byproduct of me having done this for several years now or what the case may be, but it's just I, I'm not worried about offending people anymore. You know, I'm going to give you my version of the truth. If uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Let me know. Just be civil about it. You know what I mean? This is, it's not, I don't want it to be an echo chamber over here. So it is what it is. But those channels exist. Go find one that'll tell you everything you want to hear every single day. I'm going to try and give you the truth. And also quickly, if you're catching this early and ad free, thank you for being an elite uh, member supporting outside of YouTube. Uh, I appreciate that very much. So there will be election chaos. Oh, yeah, son. There's going to be election chaos. Had a couple of those comments this morning. People were saying, hey, John, don't forget about the uh, the falsies, you know, the flags that might be coming. Don't forget things are about to get nasty. Excellent comments. I have not forgotten that. Uh, we're, we're going to get into that as well as make America great again. I mentioned I'm not a fan of that phrase so much anymore, and I'll explain why. So in my opinion, again, my opinion, folks, please don't come after me with pitchforks or anything like that. If I'm wrong, let me know I'm wrong. Let me know why. But in my opinion, most universities, especially your liberal funded universities, okay, they are indoctrination centers. Kids go, they learn very little about actual schooling, <laughs> reading, writing, and, and arithmetic, okay? And they're learning a lot about how to hate the United States of America, or at least what the United States of America is supposed to be. You got to hate capitalism now. You got to, you know, hate that constitution now. And these people are radicalized at, at the university level, I think. And then the people that fund the chaos, somebody brought this up this morning, and I think it was Gary, absolutely correct, by the way, Gary, if that was you. It's funded by, I like to call him uh, Senator Palpatine, the emperor of Star Wars, because they look very similar. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But what happens is he will fund these universities. He radicalizes these, these grown kids, these babies, as I called them this morning, and got into some people's feelings, right? Whatever. And when he needs this, he weaponizes this. And then he funds chaos. And there are others like him as well. They fund chaos. They have people that organize these things for this very reason, okay? And I alluded to it a little bit this morning. I think they're funding this chaos because of where the polls are at, and they don't want people paying attention to other things like your sovereign rights being handed over to the WEF, being signed over by Joe Biden and his administration. You're not paying attention to that if you're paying attention to Columbia University and the nonsense that is taking place there, okay? So to be very clear before we move forward in this video, okay, because I know these comments will come if I'm not crystal clear, I will be voting for Donald Trump. I'm going to be voting for Donald Trump. Anybody that's been here for any amount of time, I don't think that's a surprise. Some people have bashed me for this, but I'm going to be voting for Donald Trump because I think of the three candidates, we have three now, three legitimate candidates, I do think he's the best for the United States of America. And, you know, to the Trump haters out there, look, I'm sitting in a position where I know what Joe Biden's going to do because he's been in politics for, what, 50 years or something, 150, who knows at this point. He hasn't done squat for the American people. I've seen his resume over the last four years. I compare his resume to Trump's resume, and I like Trump's better. I'm just shooting straight. Platform versus platform, I'm picking Trump every time. However, I'm going to say this. Now, again, I'm going to be voting for Donald Trump, so please, don't, again, don't come after me with pitchforks, son. When I saw Kennedy's first commercial, all right, you can go back and you can pull up his, his very first ad. 
I said, oh, God, we've got a problem here. Conservatives and Democrats alike, they have a problem. Because the first, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds of this commercial shows nothing but the back and forth. Biden yelling about Trump. Trump yelling at Biden. Fox yelling about, uh, you know, Biden. CNN yelling about Trump. All this back and forth, this loud noise and all this distraction. And then it cuts to Kennedy and he's walking through this really, they did a good job on the ad. This, uh, you know, this serene setting. He's going through the woods. And he says, yeah, uh, this is a direct quote. Yeah, I was fed up too. That's why I'm running for U.S. president. And I said, oh, my God. You know, very, very seldom do I see a campaign ad. And I'm like, man, this is a freaking home run. Trump had one when he won presidency. It was his final campaign ad uh, the night before the election where it showed the elites and it showed Hillary and all this stuff. And uh, he ran an ad and I can't remember what it, you know, what it was called or anything, but you Trumpers will remember this. And he was saying the only thing that can save us is you. Right. And it showed him unifying everybody. And that was a very powerful campaign ad. I actually think that won him the election back in the day. This gives me the same vibes. So getting into how many people have left the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, okay? Because we always hear, and I, I agree, okay, I agree, stave, stave off with them pitchforks, uh, two, bur uh, two wings, same bird. We always hear this, totally agree, okay? But 43% of Americans right now who are eligible to vote identify as independents. 43% of the people in our country who can vote don't want anything to do with Republicans. They don't want anything to do with Democrats. And I think Kennedy has figured this out. He is tapping into this. I, I said this a few weeks back, but I think we are seeing a slow death of both political parties. Now, I think when I brought this up several weeks back, I, I said, we're going to see two more form. Okay, but you're going to have a very hardline left, like a communist party, and you're going to have a very hardline right, extreme libertarian, if you will. These are going to be the new parties. The in-between is over, and a lot of people that, that are fed up with Republicans and Democrats, right now at least, uh, and that is according to Forbes.com, they identify as independents. They want no part of either one. Here's my question. Do you think the GOP or the DNC are just going to fade away quietly? Do you think they're just going to be like, well, we had a good run, son? You know, like NASCAR drivers or something that get beat on the final lap. Well, the car was running good, but we just didn't have it today. No, no. The, these are swamp creatures. They're not going quietly. Uh, getting into y'all's comments this morning. Flag events will more than likely be showing up at some point. Orchestrated by who knows? Again, Palpatine, maybe, and in the world elites, maybe by the heads of the GOP or the DNC or people that are deeply within the swamp. Maybe, uh, you know, since we're mentioning Kennedy here, maybe by the three letter agencies. We don't know. The current chaos that we're seeing, and I've been saying this for days now, it's going to spill over into the streets. It's going to intensify because the old dude that is funding this, he's just going to keep pouring dumping gasoline on there. That's the that's the point. Create chaos, division through chaos. This is how these people rule us, right? Pandemic. Who knows? I keep hearing about the flu, the uh the bird strain if you will. Maybe the re reinvention of the C19. Who knows? These people will literally play any card to stay in power, make no mistake about it. I ran a poll this morning on purpose. I didn't know what the results were going to be, but wow. So this morning's poll results, you know, the election in November, if we have an election, okay, because there's still an outside chance that we wouldn't based on false flags or war or something like that, right? Trump by landslide, 54% of the live stream crowd uh, or, you know, the live chat crowd, 54%. Trump wins a close one, 27%. Biden for four more years, 14%. Uh, 
of people said Biden's going to win four more years and Kennedy 5%. Kennedy pulls off a miracle upset. So let me let me just say this right now. This is very accurate compared to national polls. And here's why. Trump is not going to win a close one. If that were going to happen, he would be president right now. If it is close, there's going to be some chicanery going on behind the scenes. If Trump is going to win this, it has to be by a landslide, right? So if you factor in those two next options, Trump close, Biden four more years, you begin to see the national polling data, okay? It is what it is. Um, but what this poll also shows is Trump has lost some support. I ran a poll similar to this when Biden first became president. And a lot of people even here at Prepper Nation, conservatives, he's cooled off as a candidate. I still, again, I'm voting for him. I think he's the best of the three, but he's losing support among the people that voted for him the past couple of times. Part of this is Operation Warp Speed. Got to mention it. Wasn't a fan of it. You know, he, he didn't do several things. He didn't break up big tech companies when he had the opportunity. Then he turned around and he complained that they, you know, he was being shadow banned and stuff about misinformation. Like you literally had the opportunity to break those companies up. You know, he allowed that to happen. Um, my biggest knock against Trump, though, is he surrounded himself. You know, maybe he didn't know any better. He wasn't a politician the first time around. I'll give him that much credit. But he surrounded himself with swamp creatures and personal friends who had no business having the jobs that they had. I don't remember this lady's name right off, but she took over uh, the Department of Education and it was a circus. OK, that happened under under Donald Trump. He can't blame anybody else for that. I'm not a fan of the people that he was surrounded by. You know what I'm saying? Um, John Bolton and the like. But he was surrounded by them. He made the decision to bring them in. Actually, the only cabinet member I can think of that I was a fan of was Ben Carson, uh, who was over HUD at that time. But he's a really, really solid pick. I'm going to throw it out there. A solid pick for vice president. The man's smart. He's coherent. Uh, he checks every single box, and he really does love the country, but I digress. Let's get into the slogan, Make America Great Again. I don't like this slogan. I know, I'm not trying to get up anybody's feelings, but I don't like it because I don't want to go back to where we were. You know, I think about where we were, and I think we could do a lot better even than that. It's hard to point at one president in the past, not just Trump. You can go back to Reagan. You can go back to any of these other presidents, you know, that are conservative, you know, drum beaters or whatever. We could have done so much better. I want America to be better than I've ever seen it before. Not just making America great again, not just going back to that time period when Trump was president or just prior to Barack Obama. We deserve better as American citizens. When you get right down to it, prior to Trump, when, when he's talking about going, making America great again, I look at that time period and I'm like, we were still being illegally taxed. We still had a lot of three-letter agencies that don't need to exist, to be quite frank. We were still fighting endless wars. We still had people robbing the country blind through the welfare system. OK, and the socialism programs that we have, we still had a border invasion. We deserve better than that. And I would really like for him to say that, you know what, we're going to make it the best that it can possibly be. In order for that to happen, though. America needs some real talk. And that's that's why I don't care if I offended people this morning. I wasn't going out of my way to offend people, but people need to hear the truth. There's too much parroting going on. Y'all know what I'm saying? You hear it over here and you just mouth off the same slogan. There's too much of that going on, man. People need to sit down and we need to have real discussions about where the United States is and where the United States is headed one way or the other. All right. Cause we're going in one direction or the other. I promise you. And we need to have real talk about that. If you, 
and as I said this morning before people got grumpy and started cursing and, you know, flying the bird or whatever they do online behind, you know, computer screens. <laughs> but as I said this morning, it is not America circa 1960. And it's not, you know, th this isn't me bashing the 60s. I I'm a fan of Americana. I, I really am. I'd love to have lived in that time period. But we need real talk. We need to understand where we're at in 2024. We need to understand that a lot of people that love this country, you know, maybe we're still the majority, maybe not at this point. As many people are graduating from these universities year after year after year and all the replacements coming across the border, I have no idea where the average American stands, right? You know, we, we need to have real talk, no dancing around the truth. We can't, we can't afford to be dancing around the truth. We can't afford to worry about getting up in people's feelings. If it's your truth, speak it, you know, but if you're wrong and somebody out debates you, don't be afraid to own it. When I'm wrong, I'll own it. You know, a couple of people have, have put me into a corner on here before and they've made me see the light on certain things. And I'll say, you know what? I was wrong about that. I really was. Um, we need to have accountability through the government, but guess what? That ain't happening with an election. Sorry to say. Um, I keep thinking about this quote. I haven't even seen the movie yet, right? Civil War. But I keep thinking about that quote from the trailer, what kind of an American are you? When you take a look at America right now, you always hear we're the great melting pot. <laughs> that That's sugarcoating. Um, we have constitutionalists. You know, conservatives here in the United States of America. We have socialists. I think that's very apparent with uh, the stuff that we're seeing on campuses right now. We have communists. We've seen these people before getting back for a second to Chaz and Chop and this co spirit of communal living. And we have the Middle Eastern ideology, which is really sad when you think about it because most of the chaos is taking place at Columbia and New York City. Same place, you know, the Twin Towers were there. Like, how did we go from that America to let's don't offend these people? You know what I mean? People were cheering this morning on social media. Well, we it's a win for us. The Palestinian flag came down and the United States American flag is back up. That's a win. No, that's a loss, son. Here's some real talk for you. That's a loss because it is sad that the Palestinian flag was ever flying in, in the United States of America, much less in New York. Are you kidding me right now? We got to stop with these little bitty wins. Or, well, you know, we got a little momentum. No, man, this is our country. What are we doing? There's some real talk for you. What are we doing? Let me know in the comments. This country is headed into one of those directions. I alluded to it this morning. You got to be prepared for the storm that's coming. So the storm that is coming, in my opinion, let me know what you think. You've got your constitutionalists. A lot of y'all are in chat, right? Your socialists who want a socialism government moving forward. They want to scrap the Constitution. Your commies who want to scrap the Constitution and move in that direction. Then you've got your Middle Eastern ideology. And they don't want communism. They don't want socialism. They don't want constitutionalism. They want to make it look like the Middle East here, you know, like it does in Dearborn, Michigan. They want that for all 50 states. And at some point, it's going to come down to hair splitting, nut cutting time. That's what I'm trying to tell you. At some point, those four ideologies are going to get together in not such a pleasant way, and they are going to decide the future of the United States of America. That is the storm that you need to be preparing for. While everybody else is worried about UFOs and zombies and balloons and planes moving from here to here, you need to be prepping for that scenario because that scenario guarantee you is coming to the United States of America. Don't know when, but I want to be prepared for it. Y'all take care and God bless.